the Molossi order has turned up. We have the new 13 gram rollers. Just apply a little bit of grease to the shaft. <coughs> we can move on. Okay, so in the previous video, uh, I mentioned that I was going to reuse the little luggage rack that comes on the scooters. And I'm going to mount a little 7 up uh, ice box that I purchased because I'm looking to kind of do a bit of a like a delivery scooter almost. So I've done a little bit of work. I figured out a way of mounting it. It may work. I don't know. I'm just trialing bits at the moment. This was the first idea that I had. So let me show you what I've done. So this is what I've come up with guys. It's two bits of aluminium plate. The reason I've got this one is because I didn't want the head of the bolts to sit proud, otherwise it would sort of pivot. So I've glued this uh, using the same adhesive silicon that I used to glue the, uh, the long nose onto like the headlight cowl. So this is now absolutely solid. Um, and I left it uh, nice and secure and put some masking tape really tight around it and I've left it overnight. So this is what we have. So it is absolutely rigid. And what's nice is if I remove these P-clips, I can run just the luggage rack on its own or obviously remove the four bolts and I don't have to run one at all. So it's all removable, which is brilliant. So the white paint has arrived for all the body panels and I'm also gonna paint this in white also, just so it blends in. This, I don't know if I'm going to paint green or white yet, but the bottom of this is green. Not that you see much of the aluminium, but I could paint it green. But that will sit, once the Velcro is on, that will sit just like that. So yeah, I'll give uh, all this a bit of paint and we'll see if this will work. As mentioned... I was going to try this uh, Velcro. And as you can see there, it can hold seven kilograms, which this little ice box weighs nowhere near. So I'm going to cover this plate here in the Velcro. And I'm hoping once stuck, it's rigid enough where it's not going to go anywhere, but then I can remove it as and when I want to. All back together, all painted and dry. And it's come out all right, to be fair. Once all the scooter is the same color, that will blend in lovely. So all I'll do now is I'll attach the Velcro onto this and also onto the bottom of the um, ice box and see if this idea works. It is on. And I mean, this luggage rack isn't exactly light. And yeah, <laughs> that has worked perfectly i'm so chuffed so all i have to do now is try to find a way to attach this so it won't come off when i'm riding the scooter so yeah i might be able to use the velcro maybe or i don't know i'll come up with an idea at some point but either way that that's worked. I'm really happy. What I'm going to do now is put the little reflector back on. That's the old nut. I cleaned it up as best I could. But because I had an M5 domed nut spare, I've put a brand new one on. And I've cleaned this up as best I can. The Molossi order has turned up. This was completely unexpected. This wasn't due till next week. But here we have the torsion ring. So I can now uh, get the clutch all built up, which is brilliant. But this is what we were mainly looking for. So I had to order this from Molossi Direct because nobody had it in stock. 
This is the 19 mil carburetor and it comes with absolutely everything you need. So it comes with the manifold adapter, comes with all the um, choke cable, got all the gaskets, brackets, everything. So I assume these are the instructions. I'll have a quick read through and I'll get this built up and I can get it on the engine. Okay guys, so this is everything we need to rebuild our clutch. So we have the torque driver, which I lightly serviced and gave a good clean. And as I mentioned, if you remember, these are quite expensive. So I've decided to reuse this because really I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The surfaces are actually really good condition and it operates as it should. We have the uprated um, torsion spring, which came with the uh, variator kit. We have the new performance Melossi clutch, which I put in the stiffer springs. And I'm yet to trial these. I might yet replace these with the white ones, which are like a medium stiffness, which is what this clutch came with. But this is a bit of a trial and error. I've also got the brand new clutch bell from Melossi because the original one was so badly worn that it was just worth replacing when replacing everything else. So, this torsion cap I mentioned, this quite simply fits in there. This then will sit like this. And what we now need to do is try to compress this down so then we can get the fixing knot. Right, we're going to try this technique again. It seemed to work removing it, so I think it will work trying to get it back together. And there you go. Just got to tighten this. But yeah, that seems to be, if you're uh, working on your own, that seems to be the best way of doing it. So yeah, now once this is tight, we can get this back on. So referencing an original workshop manual, which I purchased. These are the torque settings, which we need to do this up at. Get the big set out and a 38 is what you need so just need to set up my torque wrench okay now that's um torque to spec <clears throat> we can move on just apply a little bit of grease to the shaft spins lovely can fit the new clutch the new bell housing and then I'll find out using my manual what torque setting to uh, tighten this nut and we have ourselves an upgraded clutch now the variator kit okay so First of all, you want to remove the nut and the dry face. Mine's in pretty good condition, which I'm happy about. And then remove the variator itself. And inside, you want to remove this. It's three, these three bolts here, or three screws, which are removed to access it. We have the new 13 gram rollers. Now some only run three, some run six. I'm gonna run all six to start off with and see how the uh, the engine feels because it's really simple to get to the uh, clutch cover to remove. So I can 
get to the clutch springs and remove them and change them if needs be. And I can do the same with these rollers. So this is the new variator here. These are the rollers that come with the kit. And these are seven grams. And I've been told that it's best if you go for a heavier roller. And this is why I've gone for the 13s. So we don't need those. These come with the kit. These are just the guides. I've already pressed them on. There's three of them, as you can see here. And these slot in there like that. And as this pushes up and down, as the rollers lift, they just slide up and down on these here. And these can wear. So as well as the rollers wearing, you want to be careful that these aren't worn either. And you can replace these for new. This kit also comes with the new drive face boss so I'll be using this new one not sure if there's much in the way of differences between the two they look about the same size but it's new so we'll be using this one so before we install these new rollers it's recommended that you put a little bit of grease just on the inside of this drive face then we'll put the rollers in and I assume that just uh, prevents premature wear because these do get flat spots over time. So I'll grab my grease and I'll put a little bit in each one of these and then we can install the rollers. There you go. Then we can now install this. And we can simply put the variator on, like so. And whilst it's here, we can get to it. I'm going to check the pinion gear. It's a little bit dirty. It does operate as it should. But what I think I'll do whilst it's out. Just give it a good clean. Seems a shame not to. And then we know that this is also in good serviceable condition. So a little bit better. As always, Molossi loves to give stickers. I <laughs> certainly have a collection going on. So this is the uh, Special X belt, they call it. This is the size that I have. So hopefully, it should go on relatively easy. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And with that fitted, we can now fit the uh, the drive gear back on. Locate it as best you can. And then once we do this nut up, I'll align the splines and that should push the belt up on the variator where we want it. Now, one thing I am interested in doing it's just draw a couple of marks on the new variator, just with some pen. And once I get this running, I want to know how far the belt is making it up the variator, because that will give you a better top end. So with that, that's when you can start making adjustments to the rollers, the clutch, until you get it absolutely perfect, because you want to maximise that surface as best you can for better range. So I won't be able to torque these nuts up as I am waiting for a, so it's just called a universal tool. And it's basically just like a Y-shaped prong. I'll see if I can post a picture. Um, just so you can hold this rigid whilst you torque these up. 
I don't have one of those, so one of those is on order. But it's not a problem. It's on. Okay then, guys. So, other than these two pieces just here, which need prepping and painting, all of the fairings are now complete. So they are in grey primer, ready for the base coat, which will be a white. I'm not quite sure yet if I'm wanting to paint the front mudguard green, because the two that's the two main colours really. A little bit of red, but predominantly it will be the green and the white, just like the little cool box. But I can get to that. But it's gone on really well. I've had to flat back... Um, the side panels a couple of times just because there was some imperfections just here where the sticker was removed but I'm really happy with the result the front cow the long nose has come out really well it's taken a long time but it's definitely worth the effort I'm pleased to say that I think a lot of people wouldn't really pick up on the fact that this was once two individual pieces. So yeah, happy with that. So I suppose I better get on and prep these. So yeah, I'll give these a good scotch and get these in primer. I have the green paint. And I'm really happy with the... Uh, the colour match. I think that's going to be really close to what I'm after. So this is what I'll be using to paint uh, all these panels. Uh, the footplate and the speedo cover. Now I've already made a start on the prep. This is all done. Got it as best as I could. I'll just use some scotch pad. I also have made a start on this here just trying to scuff this up as best I can I do need to clean the inside out because uh, that's filthy so yeah a couple of hours spent prepping that I think there's the door for that panel um, I need to remove the lock that's really easy it's just like a little a little fork just like the side panel just remove that there, just pull it out, it'll fall out. Found another one. This one is obviously more modern compared to the other one I have. But I saw it and thought, well, I've got to buy it. So whether I decide to modify this as a topper for the flagpole, I'm not quite sure. What I was hoping to do is maybe make, make like a, a hanger from it. Almost like a key ring. So I can hang it from the bike somewhere. Which is probably the route I'll go. But either way, I bought it. Because it's just going to go with everything that I'm doing. So uh, yeah, another random little uh, purchase. So this is now in primer. This is a white plastic primer because I want the green to come out as light as possible. Whereas these panels I did in the grey. As you would have just seen, I've just prepped this. And there is a label here, which I wanted to retain. So I've just gone over it with some masking tape because I'm going to be painting the inside of this also. So yeah, let me get this into some primer. And I will continue with this panel here. So just start to sand back the uh, spotting filler, or knifing putty, as it's called. Now, you won't see any of this on the foot plate. This will actually be covered by the uh, lower cowl, the belly pan. But it's just the way I work. If there's a few scuffs and dents within the bodywork, I want to cover it up, even if you're not going to see it. I just want this to be as clean as possible. So, uh, yeah, I'll do that scuff this up as best I can and then I can apply some plastic primer. The first panel to get its base colour. So I'll do three coats of base 
and I tend to do three coats of body shop lacquer. So this is the smallest panel, so I thought I'd uh, give this a go and see how this comes out. And then continue with the rest of this. So I'm going to crack on and complete all of these panels and get them in their final base colour. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to attach the carburetor and hopefully that means I can get the engine back into the frame. And we may, if we get some power, may even be able to run it up. But with that, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.